Hi there. I believe that you may have a preconception of how time works that is limited by your beliefs based on your experience of this physical reality. And in this video, I want to open your mind to another way of thinking about time and to do that um, I've got a, a metaphor which I've come up with that I think does it pretty well so imagine if you will there's a tree um, and on this tree there's a branch and on the end of this branch hangs a single apple um, directly underneath the apple on the ground is uh, yin yang um, and it's exactly the apple is exactly above the center of the yin yang if it was to fall straight down it would go bang straight into the middle of the yin yang between on both black and white um, but obviously there's variables like wind and um, uh, well I don't know other things um, but yeah so in our world with time as it exists right now if the wind was to blow and the apple were to fall uh, I would ask you upon which color black or white or even the grass itself would that apple land just hypothetically you know now um, you have to choose an answer because in this reality there is only one outcome for every moment and every moment exists, and therefore every moment must be one thing or another. Um, Schrodinger's cat uh, is the famous example of thinking um, differently to this. But Schrodinger's cat, again, doesn't exist in this physical reality because it implies possibility rather than um, reality. In this experiment I want you to choose an outcome it doesn't matter what you choose um, just choose an outcome does it land mainly black mainly white does it land on the grass or does it land somewhere in the middle of one or two or three of them whatever you've chosen you're right I mean ultimately we don't know where it lands it's gonna land on one of them so you're right um, and that is our reality as it exists at the moment time goes from point A to point B and there is definite um, reality, there's definite outcomes, there's reality. Now, if we rewind and then we put the apple back on the tree and the wind blows in exactly the same way and the apple falls in exactly the same way as before, now this time, halfway down, time doesn't exist. And now what happens to the apple? Where does it land? Have a think or not, it's up to you. <laughs> so, for many people, for many of us, what they may say, or you may say, um, in answer to where the apple falls if time doesn't exist, was, well, it stops, right? If time doesn't exist, then everything halts. Um, that is our misconception of how time works. If I had said that time stops, that answer would be right. The apple would indeed hang. If time was to stop, then the apple would hang in midair at that exact moment and it would never move again until time was once again to have started. I said, if time doesn't exist, what then happens to the apple? And that's the key fundamental difference between what we think of as time and um, what we believe time is capable of and everything like that. If time doesn't exist, then it's not a case of nothing moves, everything stops. But what it means is the laws of time would no longer apply. In a reality where time does not exist, then an entity, a being, is free to flit. Um, from any point in time to any point in time, at any point in time. 
And therefore, if we're talking about the apple, time doesn't exist for the apple, then the apple is everywhere and nowhere, all at the same time. So it's on black, it's on white, it's on green, it's non-existent, it's existent, it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. The rules of time are that, in our reality, are such that we move from point A to point C, via point B, you know, it's a straight line. We can't go backwards, we can't go forwards. We are at the mercy of time's um, time speed, which again is something that is kind of interesting because we don't know whether or not time has a speed. I mean, there's often those things where people say, oh, you know, time flies when you're having fun. And yeah, that's true. And it may well just be because um, you know, when we're having fun, it's we don't think about or worry about anything. And often those worries and those thoughts are what appear to make things last longer, you know, because your mind's more active. Whereas if you're completely immersed in something, then it goes faster because you just your mind's not, you know, sort of following any um, straight pattern. It's just flitting and it's just enjoying itself. Anyway, that's a bit of a tangent, but basically, you know, there could well be um, time speeding up and time slowing down at, at times. How do we know that? Because if we're all at the mercy of time then we wouldn't feel if time speeds up or slows down, we would just be existing. But anyway, that's another thought about time. That is the yin-yang tree, um, and hopefully what that will have done for you is to um, show you that you have had, we have, most of us have had this preconception that time um, if it doesn't exist, means that everything stops. But actually, time doesn't exist. It's the complete opposite. It opens up infinite. It opens up infinity, pretty much. And that is, I believe, an explanation for uh, omnipotent beings. So you could say a god, for example. Um, what we would see in the physical reality, if we saw an op no, if there if we had an experience of an omnipotent being, would be that this being is everywhere, all at the same time. You know, it's, it's... And how do we explain that? We can't explain that in terms of a physical being, in terms of our reality, because it's not possible to be in more than one place at the same time, uh, apart from if you're a life particle. And then, well, it's very interesting. But we define our beliefs, we create our beliefs based on our reality and what we see and what we know and what we understand and if, you know, and if we try and explain things based on our reality then actually we're, or we could be, missing what is really going on. So where we've been trying to define God, and we're talking about God and, you know, you, not in a religious way per se but as an idea, you know, if we're talking about God and we define God as omnipotent, then what we, we then we're contextualizing that in terms of what our world is and how we understand our world. And what if God is not part of our reality? What if God exists or anything like that? What if they exist in another sort of reality, another plane, another dimension, however you want to call it, and within their dimension that they're existing in? Time doesn't exist, which would allow that entity to travel freely um, through time infinitely. And then if you condense that down into a physical reality, what we would see is that that person, that being, that God is omnipotent. Whereas for the God, for the person, for the being, it's not omnipotence at all. Because that being would be experiencing everything at that point, at whatever point in time it was in, but because the laws of time don't apply, it's not going to die, it's not going to age, so it's going to live, it's going to um, exist infinitely, and therefore it's going to go to every single point in the timeline, infinitely. 
and it will experience each of those points in minute detail as if it were alive. So when we talk about a God as being omnipotent and knowing everything about us, then that is true. But it's not like our reality. It's not God or a being is existing right now through each and every one of us at the same time. I mean, it is when we look at it, but for God or for that being, it, it, he, it, she, whatever, experiences each moment, each life, in its entirety. And if that's true, just I want you to think about that and let that sink in. It means that God, or a being, or there's a possibility that a God, a being, an entity, is with us, each and every one of us, all the time throughout life, loving us. Let's say could be could be hating us. I don't know. I don't know anything about what is out there. All I can share with you is my thoughts on the possibilities. Um. Yeah, and and so if that is the case, then as I say, there is a being with each of us right now, but individually, in terms of the being, like it's experiencing us completely individually and in it and in our entirety. Who's to say that we aren't that being? Like many people have said, we're all connected, we're all um, like God in a, in a way that's been said. And what if that's how it's achieved? That our spirit, the soul which is inhabiting our physical being, is God. But it's from another um, realm, it's from another plane of existence in which time does not exist. And therefore, it is all of us, at, all at the same time, because in this reality it seems that way, but in its reality, it's in fact doing us all one by one over the course of the entire history of the universe. So, in summation, I would say to you that, you know, don't try and give this being, if it's a you know, possibility that exists, one hell of a ride, you know? You are everyone, you are everything. And we're all connected. And nothing really matters. So, yeah. Peace out.